Worlds, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can use the distributive property to help us solve multiplication and division problems. So our learning goal for today says, I can use the distributive property to solve multiplication and division problems. First, we're going to start with our application problem. So it says, Mabel cuts nine pieces of ribbon for an art project. Each piece of ribbon is seven centimeters long. What is the total length of the pieces of ribbon that Mabel cuts? So you can solve using any strategy and write an equation to represent the problem and then use a, the letter T to represent the unknown. Okay, so you're it. I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video, solve the application problem, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure you click pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. All right, so I drew a tape diagram to help me. I know that the total is the T for the total length. I don't know that, though. I have to solve for that. But what I do know is that there's nine pieces of ribbon, and each piece of ribbon is seven centimeters. So this is one piece of ribbon. So I'm going to draw my tape diagram into nine separate parts for the nine pieces of ribbon. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I know that each one is seven centimeters and nine times seven equals 63. So the total length of the ribbon is 63 centimeters. Okay, so we're gonna take what we just thought about there and use it for our concept development today. So here I have my tape diagram. What multiplication fact matches this tape diagram? Yeah, nine times seven, awesome. Okay, so say nine times seven in unit form. Nine sevens. All right, so we've learned how to break apart and distribute to help us solve larger multiplication facts. How did we do that? Oh yeah, we use that friendly five to be able to help us break into smaller parts. And most of the time, we broke it into fives or anything that had to do with a five because multiplying with fives is so much easier than probably any other fact that we know. So five sevens plus how many sevens equal nine sevens? Yeah, four sevens because five sevens plus four sevens equals nine sevens. All right, so you guys are going to take this tape diagram, you're going to draw it out on your whiteboard, and you're going to draw a dotted line separating the five sevens from the four sevens on your tape diagram. So where would you draw a dotted line straight up and down to put five sevens on one side and four sevens on the other side? And then you're going to label five sevens and four sevens on your tape diagram with multiplication facts. So my whole tape diagram multiplication fact is nine times seven. But once you draw that line, what would be the two new multiplication facts that you have? One for each side. So go ahead, pause the video, go ahead and draw the tape diagram, draw that dotted line and label the two new multiplication facts. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure you pause if you need more time. Okay, so here's where I would draw my line. So I have five times seven on the left and four times seven on the right. So to be able to write this in expressions, I have five times seven. Notice how I put parentheses in there because I want to keep those together. Plus four times seven. Why is this expression the same as nine times seven? Yeah, because we took our tape diagram that shows us nine times seven and we just broke it up into familiar facts of like the five and then it turned into four. All right, so here we're going to solve 9 times 7. So you would do 9 or 5 times 7, which is 35, plus 4 times 7, which is 28. So you can combine those together. I know that 5 plus 8 is 13. So I have 1, 10, 3, 1s. And then I add my 10s, and I have 6, 10s. So 9 times 7 equals 63. Okay, so now I want you to use the distributive property to solve 8 times 6. 
So you're it. Pause the video. Go ahead and do eight times six. Use a tape diagram the same way that we just did if that's helpful for you to be able to break apart um, into smaller factors, right? Try and go with the five. It's so much easier, friends. All right, so pause the video. Click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So here is my tape diagram for eight times six. I broke it apart right here so I could have five times six on this side and three times six on the other side. I know that I would add five times six plus three times six. And I know that five times six is 30 because I know those fives and three times six is 18. So 30 plus 18, add my one, zero plus eight is eight and four plus one or three plus one is four. So eight times six equals 48. Did you get the same thing? All right, awesome friends. If not, make sure to just go back and watch the video to see how I solved it again. Okay, so let's talk about how we can use division to help us, uh, or the distributive property with division. So we're gonna use a number bond and the distributive property to solve 48 divided by six. So I know that in the big part of my number bond, I'm gonna have 48 divided by six. Then I'm gonna have two parts of my number bond. The first one, I wanna be able to split it with my friendly fives again. So I wanna take that six and use the opposite, and I'm gonna multiply for six times five, and I know that that's 30. So 30 divided by six is five, okay? Because remember, multiplication and division are related. So now I'm gonna be left with what I have left over. So I know that I'm dividing by six in both. Well, if I have 48 right here, and I take away 30, I'm left with 18. So I know that 18 and I'm still dividing by six goes in the other part of my number bond. So let's show our work with an equation. So we have 48 divided by six equals 30 divided by six, that's one part of my number bond, plus the other part of my number bond, which is 18 divided by six. So now I can go ahead and solve each one of those. So 30 divided by six, oh, that's a friendly five, plus 18 divided by six is three. So five plus three equals eight. So 48 divided by six equals eight. So using that distrib distributive property can even help us when we're using division. All right, so I want you guys to solve the problem using the distributive property and write an equation to show your work. So if you wanna draw that number bond, you can do that to help you. Your problem is 56 divided by eight. So you're it, go ahead and pause the video, solve the problem using the distributor property and write an equation to show your work and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. All right, so I have 56 divided by eight. I'm gonna do a friendly five. So eight times five is 40. So 40 divided by eight is one part of my number bond. And then I know that 56 minus 40 is 16. So 16 divided by eight isn't the other part of my number bond. So now I have to show my work with an equation. So 56 divided by eight equals 40 divided by eight plus 16 divided by eight. And 40 divided by eight equals five. And 16 divided by eight equals two. And five plus two equals seven. So 56 divided by eight equals seven. You can also check it by doing eight times seven to see if it equals 56, okay? So awesome job solving that one, friends. All right, so right on, guys, using the distributive property to multiply and divide, right on. All right, please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, I'd be more than happy to help. So just please let me know if you need my help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.